Three days into our stay at Iquitos on the 6th of January 2013, we decided to take a tour of the butterfly farm and animal refuge, and then take a cruise out to the Amazon River for some pink dolphin watching. Our research nine months earlier showed that the best way to do that was to contact a person named Bill Grimes, an American now living in Iquitos, who could do a package tour for us. So we saw him and then paid $153, and then the next day we were all set to go. Once again, pan flutes and other wind instruments play Inca music, either charm you or annoy you accordingly. After completing our tour of Balin, which is covered in part one of our Iquitos series, we took a motor tricycle to Bella Vista Port. From there, it's a four kilometer boat ride out to the butterfly farm. As it was low season for tourists, we had Bill's beautiful 33 foot wooden craft all to ourselves and a personal guide and captain as well. There's even a toilet on board and now I can say I've made a contribution to the Amazon River, something I've always wanted to do. Mosquitoes are a problem in the area as well, but we were well equipped. Something I've always wanted to do is cruise on the Amazon River. And now I am. Last week I couldn't even spell Amazon and this week I'm cruising it. Can I stay out here? Yeah, yes of course. You may stay right out here. This area two weeks ago was split dry and there's a road under here. The four kilometer cruise upstream takes about 45 minutes. There's not a lot to do except enjoy the amazing scenery. Look at that, it's walking on water. Uh -huh. It's a bit bad, it's a bit bad. It's got something in its mouth. Yeah. Beautiful bird. Yeah. It's just eating whatever it was in his beak. Women's work is never done. Mm. 
Padre Cocha village. You're gonna walk the plank, are you? <laughs> <laughs> This is rather technical. Enough mud for you? It's the rainy season, you know. I've never seen a balsa wood tree before. The trek from the landing point to the butterfly farm was 1.3 kilometres. Normally the canoe would berth outside the farm, but due to the rainy season and flooding, that wasn't possible and we had to walk through the local village, which we would have preferred anyway. What was the flower name? Heliconia. Heliconia. Yeah. This is a relative to banana, but this one, the name is ginger. It's relative ginger, to ginger. Ginger, yeah. Mm. We have that at home, but not pink. Oh, yeah. It's okay. yellow. Yeah. The heliconia butterfly. Oh, there's lots of them. Not. A butterfly can't actually fly at this speed. It would fall out of the sky. I've actually slowed this clip down by four times so that we can see how it actually flies. At the waiting area, we waited our turn for a tour. There was plenty going on to keep us entertained, so the wait didn't seem that long. <laughs> As it was low season, the farm owner, Gudrun Spera, took the tour herself. There was a lot of blah 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 about butterflies, but the most disturbing thing she mentioned was that the butterflies starve to death when pesticides are used as they mask the smell of food for them. It is amazing, yeah, because actually there's nothing completely built yet in there, mm. no? It's a mass, mass of cells, mm. but fluid. they react. But what really steals the show is not the butterflies, but the farm's exotic animals. The pygmy marmoset is the world's smallest monkey, at 15 centimetres or 6 inches long, and weighing only 200 grams. These ones were rescued from animal traffickers at Iquitos International Airport. Next up, biting monkeys. Here, the female, when she got sexually made too, she started to hate all the females but her, and but me. She bites anything, from little girls up to big mothers. Oh, that's my cell phone here. No. <laughs> we got the blah 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 on the monkeys, but basically they got here having been orphaned, their parents being victims of animal trafficking. She was the one why we still tell people, leave your stuff in the monkey proof house, 
because she took everything. And she was in the beginning, she was very nice. For example, she would hang around your neck. Of the Moving along, rather slowly, was a sloth. It moves really fast, doesn't it? I don't need slow motion on the camera. Here we come, walk down the street. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And people say we're monkeying around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody down. We go where we want to, do what we like to do. Uh. <laughs> yeah, could you come ahead? Because you they never go off. That's all the, the problem with sloths is that it's very difficult to raise them because the mother's milk, they drink it up to nine months, mm -hmm. is a very special composition. It is yeah. milk without lactose, mm -hmm. vitamin K and yeah. taurine. Taurine, yeah. Oh, he is so beautiful. He is now, yes. When he, he was dropped here by a guy who just dropped the box actually in my port. A wooden box wrapped with barbed wire. Oh, that's a good idea. Compensa. Doesn't have much meat in there. How do you eat the bone in here? Wow. Here. <laughs> Next, we had the pleasure of meeting a cotus, a mammal from the same family as raccoons. Mm. <laughs> Familiar face. <laughs> the very flexible. She, she went like, oh, she's lovely and soft. Darling. <laughs> I would have to her free. Uh, she was free until the day I found her inside the hatchery. <laughs> she had completely destroyed everything. You know, she had oh. opened the mansion at the door. <laughs> He's hungry. He might just want that. Well, he just had a cup of protein with oats. And now he's going to go for ants again. See the big, big claws he has on his head? Wow. Hola, Julian. Oh, I see. What is, what's that? He's, He's afraid, afraid of us. Oh, okay, I'll back off. Rossa, a giant but very shy anteater, was the last resident we were introduced to. He loves the raspberry. Pelato. Muchas gracias. After those wonderful experiences, it was time to go, but not before our guide cut some fresh fruit for us to try. Mm. How's it? Mm. The name is Pihuayo, mm. for lover palm tree. Mm -hmm. Because the scientists say this palm tree, they keep, they keep with the other plants mm -hmm. around. It's dry. Oh, yeah. It tastes like a potato, does it? Um, not a 
exactly like a potato. Um, much more pumpkin -y, I think. Than right. Potato -y. <laughs> we took the easy way out by taking a motor tricycle back to our canoe, a distance of 1.3 kilometres. During the rainy season, the river rises more than 7 metres or 23 feet and the vegetation rises with it, it just seems to float on top of the water. We pulled over to the side of the river, in amongst the floating vegetation, for a bit of lunch which was included in the tour price. It doesn't look very nice but it's really yum, it's like passion fruit. After lunch, we made our way out to the Amazon River to try and spot some pink dolphins. It was noteworthy for us to see a naval base 2,600 kilometres inland from the ocean. Next up was some pink dolphin spotting. The Amazon pink dolphin, or Inia geofrensis, is a fresh water dolphin, and they're not the same as ocean going dolphins. For a start, their boto cervical vertebrae are not fused, allowing them to move their head up to 180 degrees which is a great help for hunting in shallow waters and flood plains. Did you see my left? Yep, I saw that. Yeah. That right there, you see, much of one, young one. Hmm. Dolphin spotting in the rainy season is difficult because the river is so wide, and they can be anywhere, whereas in dry season, they're confined to more specific areas. For that reason, we saw lots of dolphins, but we couldn't catch them on camera. Our guide, who could speak dolphin, tried to talk them into coming over to see us. Yeah, I saw it. Did you see my there are five species of Amazon dolphins, one of them being the grey dolphin. That's a grey one. Yep. This is it? Yep. The longest mouth. The Amazon River is South America's largest river by discharge of water at 209,000 cubic metres per second. The Amazon Basin is the largest drainage basin in the world at 7 million square kilometres and accounts for one-fifth of the world's total river flow. Its width in wet season is up to 48 kilometres or 30 miles wide and it enters the Atlantic Ocean at 240 kilometres or 150 miles wide. After an hour's dolphin watching, 
we headed back to the port and then back to our hotel. truck in front got no mud guards <laughs> 